<laughs> Praise the Lord. I love Sunday morning. You love Sunday morning? Coming together, worshiping with God's people, just being together is so amazing. We have uh, been, uh, I'm excited about the, what's coming up. Amen. We got our, 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 uh, our, our team meeting coming up. We have tour of mass coming up. We have women's meeting coming up. We have men's retreat coming up. I'm just excited. God is doing some stuff. Amen. And uh, I'm more excited because of the text messaging. You get that 7979, easy plus one, right? If you're doing something, you talk to somebody about Jesus or get to know somebody's name that you haven't known before or invite them to dinner or go out to lunch, text us. Let us know so we can celebrate. Oh, one thing that uh, we don't measure uh, normal church measurement, you know, how many church people showed up on Sunday, how much is an offering, and then how many got baptized, how many gave, yeah, that's, you know, that's like, okay, that's like the end result thing. The fun stuff is what you're doing every day that nobody talks about, right? When you share Jesus with somebody at work, and you, or you pray for somebody, we don't even hear about that, we just want to hear about those things, we know you're doing stuff, amen? And we want to celebrate that together as a group, and so we don't know what it looks like all the time, but I know God's doing stuff. I love, uh, anyway, I got a chance to text a few times, like, you know, because I got to know my neighbor, invite him to dinner, and uh, get my other neighbors, and uh, anyway, it's kind of fun. But, um, yeah, praise the Lord. Um, today, we've been, uh, uh, we're going to continue our last uh, sermon on the series of Live Sent. And if you remember, we'll just, I'll just recap a little bit. Uh, Pastor Andrew started the series off with the power of the gospel, amen? The power of the gospel changed lives. If you're in darkness and you come to light, your life changed, you're transformed in God's image, and man, your whole life can be changed. And we, that's the message that we're supposed to share, and share that on Matthew 8, uh, 10a. And then uh, the next week he said, shared, says, say something, right? Just say something to somebody. Share Jesus with somebody and encourage us to do that out of Romans 10. And then um, the sermon after that was eat with somebody, right? Because in Luke, Jesus was either going, eat, uh, eating somewhere, going to eat somewhere, or, or coming from eating someplace. And he, did, he ministered that way. And so like, invite people to eat with you. Because when you eat with people, guess what? You become friends instantly, don't you? Right? You get to know, hear their story, and, and we're teaching the story of God in our missional community groups. We're learning how to our story fits in God's story, so we're now actively listening to what God's doing in their lives and be able to share Jesus with them through that process. It's amazing to see the transformation of people's lives. So it's a, it's a good thing. If, if you don't know how to be an evangelist, right, or you don't want to, I don't know how to win people to Jesus, I don't know what to do, well, take them out to dinner, invite them to your house for dinner, and share, uh, get to know them, and through that process, maybe not the first time, maybe not the second time, maybe the third or fourth, but who knows what time, God will open up that door and you can share Jesus with them, and who knows what's going to happen, amen, let God be glorified in that. And then Todd Lucas came last week, wasn't that wonderful, did you guys were here last week. I was like, yes, I love campus ministry. I love the discipleship process that they use. I love uh, seeing internationals come to Jesus. You know, a lot of times, and just a plug for Tour of Madison, if you get involved in that, uh, please do. Uh, we have internationals that come and they have heard about Jesus or some form of Christianity in their country. Maybe a grandmother was saved, but the rest of them are not. Maybe they're Buddhist or Hindi or whatever. But, you know, they heard about Jesus, and, uh, um, you know, and then they come here, and then they get confirmed that, yes, this Jesus is real, yes, this is Jesus is alive, and they come to give their life to Jesus. I don't want to talk about Jesus the first day on the tour of Madison. I just want to be friends with them. And what do we do? We bring them over to our house or somebody's house to eat. <laughs> and in that process, they're really, it's kind of fun because um, they, um, they come and they, they're proud of what they're doing here. Like they, they got accepted at the University of Madison to be a Rhodes Scholar and they're coming to uh, teach their, whatever their, their discipline is for a year. And so they get that check mark on their, on their resume that they went to an international school. And so they're proud. They're like, I'm a the member linguistic guy, right? He was a doctor in linguistic studies and he was very from China, and he's very, very proud, and he, he was sharing in a room what everybody's little dialect was, and he was telling us about it. It was kind of fun, but he was very proud that he was a, a postdoctorate work he was working on. Anyway, it's fun to get to know new people, 
and it's fun to share Jesus with International. So please uh, let Pastor Andrew know that you want to help out that area. And the follow-up is going to be, we're going to talk about that later, but just to, to after the first meeting, get to invite them to your home or to dinner or to campus and get to meet them and get to know them better and to follow up. So praise the Lord. So this, today's sermon, today, uh, I want to, I want to treat today not like Sunday morning, I want to preach at you, is that okay? But I want to do it today like your Wednesday night, you're sitting in my living room and we're sharing Jesus with each other and we're challenging each other to do something for his kingdom. Is that okay? So I'm going to pretend you're all sitting in my couches in my living room and I'm going to share with you a few things and I'm going to have you do some things today, amen? Instead of coming out up today at the end and we're going to repent of our sins or we're going to ask Jesus to change us and come to the altar, but today we're going to pray something together for friends, somebody besides ourselves. Hey Amen. I'm going to show you how to do that. I got a little helper for a help card for that. And over the next few months and years or whatever, uh, maybe you can use this as a, a tool to help you bring somebody to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, and I think it's powerful that we have this group here today. So anyway, so live uh, the series lives in, and today I'm going to ask you to pray something, do something, and invite, eat with somebody, uh, and today we're going to say, uh, pray something. So let's go to Acts, well let me read this, I want you to open up your Bibles to Matthew uh, chapter 25, <clears throat> and as you get there, I'm going to read Acts 17, 30 through 31, so Matthew 25, when you get there, look at me and say, I got it. You got it, okay, one. Matthew 25, and we're going to be in verse 31. You put your finger there for a minute, or in your iPhone, or your whatever device you have. We're not particular to iPhones, just I have an iPhone, so I already brought this iPhone. But if you have a, like, a, I don't know, whatever else they have out there. <laughs> what is it? Android. Android, that's right, sorry, Android. If you have an Android phone, that's fine too. That's, I mean, we're not like iPhone only church or something like that. It's just I have one and I reference it all the time, so. <coughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, you there? Yeah. All right, sit right there and listen to this verse first. And this is Acts 17, 30 through 31. Just listen to what I read. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance. So talk about the church, uh, church at the time, or the uh, unbelievers. But now he's commanded all people everywhere to repent. Let me read it again. But now he has commanded all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. Who is that? Jesus. 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 Okay, look at Matthew 28. This is Jesus' words himself. And Jesus is talking about the sheep and the goat. So every we know there's a judgment coming in the world. There's People are going to either consider sheep or to consider goats. And this is what Jesus' own words. So let's look at what he said here in verse 31. It says, When the Son of Man came in his glory and all the angels with him, <clears throat> he will sit on his throne in heavenly, in heavenly glory. All the nations, everybody say all the nations. All the nations. I love that, the word of God. Everywhere, everybody's included in God's word, amen? amen. <clears throat> all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep on his right side and the goats on his left. I won't preach this whole series, but I just want you to listen to the words. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you have blessed, you are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom, prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. Remember Andy talked about doing something? Yes. All right, okay, here's some of the things you should do. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. And I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you, you looked after me. Uh, I was in prison, and you came and visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did I do? Uh, when did we do? When did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or uh, or needing clothes and clothed you? When did when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? The king will reply, This is what he'll say to you. I tell you the truth. Whenever you did it to one of the least of my brothers, you have done it unto me. Praise the Lord. So when you want to say, what, pastor, what should I do? I would say, go to Matthew 25 and read it. That's how you exactly what you should do. Amen. Help people. Lead them to Jesus. Share with them. Clothe them. Visit them. 
Don't let a stranger feel be strange. You know, help them out anyway. But in all that, teach them about the king. Amen? Because there is a judgment coming. And here's the judgment for those that don't do this or don't serve God. Those that, those that are, are living in darkness. Those that are outside the love of God. Those that don't walk in the light but walk in the darkness. Those that love darkness rather than light. Those that, that reject the love of God. Those that reject your message. Those that don't do this thing. Listen to what happens. Says, then he says to those... Uh, on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed into eternal life, prepared for you for the devil and his angels. So the, the darkness that God has talked to was not, really, was not prepared for us, but for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not let me. Or maybe this could be some Christians too, I guess, if you want to call them some Christians. I was hungry and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and you in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, we did. Uh, when did we see you hungry and, or thirsty or a stranger or need clothes or sick or in prison or, uh, or, and did not help you? He, he replied, I tell you the truth, whenever you did not do it for one of the least of these, you did not do it for me. Then they will go away into eternal judgment, but the righteous to eternal life. So there's eternal judgment coming and eternal life. So, Pastor, why do you start off this sermon this way? Because I believe we need to have a heart for those that are not going to make it, or those that are outside the light. We need to see that our... Our, our passion for what we do, not only to take care of ourselves and to help us mature in Christ, which we encourage you to do. Read your Bible, pray, get involved, right? Be disciple. be humble enough to be disciple. Go and be part of a missional community group. Let us help you grow in Christ and, and see you mature in and, 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 and Him and do the things of, of the ministry outside coming Sunday morning. I think Pastor Andrew shared that also. We, we love that you come on Sunday morning. But it's not only about Sunday morning. That's why we have the text thing, because we want to know what you're doing, right? So, yeah, I showed up to church today. All right, good job. I got a check mark. I uh, read my Bible today. All right, I listened to Christian music today. All right, whatever you did to encourage yourself in the faith, that's awesome. Don't, don't, we don't want to belittle that at all. But there's more. Can everybody say there's more? There's more. There's much more. There's much more. And it's us living our life every day for His kingdom, right? Why are we here? We're here to glorify Jesus. We're here to be encouraged on Sunday morning. But on Tuesday, when you invite somebody to your house, and you get to pour your love, God's love into them, all of a sudden, God just fills you up more and more. And all of a sudden, you're giving up more, you're loving more, you're doing more because it's, in, it's out there. And so we have to have a passion in our heart for those that are not going to make it. So it's our job not only to live and walk in the Spirit and, and be like Jesus, but then we, I think we have a responsibility to look at the goats and help them to be sheep. Have compassion for the lost and dying and know that it's our responsibility as a church and as an individual to bring them to come closer to Jesus. And so that's, that's my, my uh, premise for what I'm, I'm going to speak about today, is that we have to have a heart like Jesus had, willing to even die for the loss, which he did, and not only that, that he rose again. He gave his all to see us come to him, amen? And I think we have to look at giving our all for him, or for the dying world around us, so they can come to know Jesus also, amen? And I, I uh, man, I tell you, I prayed a lot. I love praying. Uh, there's times in my life I don't pray. Does anybody say amen? There's times when you go through seasons where you just pray every day, right? I'm seeking God. I feel His presence. I, I hear His voice. I read His words a lot. I'm excited with it. And then how many of ever gone through a time where you, you did pray or you didn't read the words? It's like you're in a dry and thirsty land. Man, I know the Word of God is true, but it's hard for me to read. I know I need to get on my knees and pray, but it's something that is difficult to do. I, I, like God does that to Paul. I think we all go through seasons of maturing, of seeking, and asking of God. And when we go through that hard desert time, I want you to know God is there with you. His Spirit's there with you. He's just saying, come, will you trust me? Will you, will you allow me to pour in your life? Will you, let, will you come follow me? And you're going to have to say, yes, Lord, again. Yes, Lord, again. Yes, Lord, again. And all of a sudden, he changed you. So I'm just asking today to look at, not look at ourselves today, 
but let's look at what needs to be done. Amen? So let's, let's take it and say, okay, I, I'm going to get everything I need from God. I, I, I have faith to believe that God will give you all that you need today. Physically, spiritually, you know, whatever you need, God is there to give it to you. Amen? I try, how many believe, believe that today? Yes. All right? So now we say, okay, now what do we do? Like, what do we do? What do we do? How do we go and, and, and have a heart after these lost people? Because, like, when I came to Christ, I mean, it was about me. What, what, what do I need to change in my life? What do I need to uh, mature? What do I need to get rid of? I mean, I don't know about you, but like God had to you know, after I came to Jesus, there was a lot more stuff that needed to be cleaned out of my life, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he did that. But now it's like, okay, and God's still doing that, amen? And he's still changing me to his character. But now it's time to look at what, how do we meet that need? In Matthew 18, 19, it says, again, truly I tell you that if Two of you on earth agree about anything that you ask, it will be done to you by my Father in heaven. So I look at a verse, the first thing I think when I read that verse is like, well, hey man, what I can ask God for what I need, right? If I, if I ask anything in Jesus' name, Jesus is going to give it to me, right? Or the Father's going to give it to me. And the first thing I think is like, I'm really selfish. It's like, I need whatever. You fill in the blank. I need more of your presence, I need more cash, I need a better car, I need a better house, I need, right? You see those verses and you go, that's what I need. But now, I think I'm beginning to change a little bit because I'm thinking that as I pray this prayer, I, my needs begin to change to what God wants. And what does God want? Seriously, what does God, do you ever think about that? What, what does God want? Maybe that'd be our prayer today. Like, God, what do you want? And I truly believe this with all my heart. God wants everybody to come unto repentance. God doesn't want to see anybody perish. And that's the will of God. I, I know that, I know that uh, in my heart that that's what he doesn't want to see any person in this church family, in Madison, Wisconsin, in the United States, all over the world, he wants everybody to come to him. Because there is a judgment coming. There's a judgment coming. And I, I've listened to a few sermons this week, and, and some people I respect, you know, they say, well, it's coming really fast. The judgment's coming, like, really soon. How many of you have ever heard that? There's a judgment coming. Like, there's a judgment coming very soon. <clears throat> and I go back and think, well, my pastor said that back in when I first got saved. I'm sorry, I won't tell you when, but anyway. <clears throat> so they're saying the same thing. Ever since, right? There's an urgency in our spirit that says there's a judgment coming. There's a harvest time that's coming. There's a, there's a time of reaping that I think is now. There's a time of, of harvest where lost people will come to Jesus. I think is is sooner than later. I think as a church, we need to realize that as we continue in living sent, that we will see the harvest. Amen? Remember Jesus said, pray for the laborers, right? Pray for them. Pray for those that come and help bring in the harvest. Well, you're my harvest getters, okay? We're a harvest church. We're going to see people come to Jesus, amen? And we're going to do that through prayer. This is uh, Matthew 21, 20 says this. If you believe, you receive whatever you ask in prayer. How many have trouble praying? Nobody? Awesome, because I'm coming to you then. <laughs> But whatever you ask in prayer, believe it. Uh, John 14, 3 says, Whatever you ask in my name, I will, I, will sum, uh, I will do it. I will do it to glorify the Father. Whatever you ask in His will, I will do it to glorify the Father. So what are you asking for? And what are you asking for is it glorifying the Father. Well, I want to glorify the Father, amen? I want to glorify Jesus. I want to say, and the Word of God says, if we lift Jesus up in the world, and then He'll draw men to Himself, amen? So we, that's why we teach the gospel. Do you know what the gospel is? How many can explain the gospel? Everybody here should, right? Jesus came and died for you, for your sins, right? Not only that, He, he restored mankind to God, and then when he, they crucified Him, He rose from the dead, and He's alive, sitting at the right hand of the Father right now, praying for you and me, interceding for us. The gospel is really simple. Here's a, a key verse. I have been asked thousands of times, Pastor, how do I pray? You ever, know? you ever get that? What I, I don't want to pray. 
I was talking to a pastor, Pastor, uh, uh, I don't know if some of you know him, Pastor Andrew, he's a, uh, from Ghana, Africa, he, was, uh, he used to have to come here every day and study, uh, they have an African church on the, uh, near the hospital on the other side of town, and so one day we were talking about prayer, I said, Pastor, I just feel so dry, I feel so like I'm talking to the wall, you ever get that way? And I pray, yeah, just like, I'm just bouncing off the wall, I don't know what I'm praying, he says, well, let me give you an exercise. This is well when you come and I tell my love to come to the sanctuary. So you come to the sanctuary, so grab a chair, put the chair in front of you, sit down, and then pray and uh, talk to God like he's sitting in the chair in front of you. You ever try that? Like just talk to God, right? Just talk to him. Like God, I'm, you know, I'm defeated, I don't feel good, my body hurts, I, I, I don't know, my, um, I'm, I have some unbelief here. You know, you just talk to God, and if you do that, then, you know, it's like God talking right back to you, but you're just talking to a chair. Don't let nobody record that, because it kind of looks funny, but, you know, it doesn't matter. It's like you're just talking to God, and you can talk to God anytime. This is how you should pray. Look at your Bibles in uh, John 16, 23. I love how it's said. Well, let me turn it over to you. And it says, that, In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. I will tell you the truth. My Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Let me say it again. In that day, which I think is this time, any time after his death, you will no longer ask anything. I tell you the truth, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now you have not asked anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, your joy will be complete. God wants you to ask and your joy will be complete. But you're gonna ask and you say, so I just wanna teach people that are new at praying, and maybe some of us have to redo this. When I pray, I pray to the Father. And I ask the Father for whatever we have need of. If it's for my wife, if it's for my children, if it's for this church family, for our city, for a lost person, my neighbor, whoever asks, I'm asking the Father. Father, help this person come to you. Father, send your Holy Spirit to convict and draw them to you. Father, I ask in an authority that was given to me by Jesus Christ. Amen. Right? And I don't always not that like that, but sometimes it's just me talking, right? But I pray that way. Why? Because Jesus has given us authority. And think about what Jesus did. And I'm going to remind you of this. And I know you probably already know this. But when Jesus died on the cross, it says the temple in the curtain in the temple was ripped from top to bottom, correct? So that gave us access now. We didn't have to go through the blood of a lamb. We didn't have to go through a high priest. We could go, now all of us can go right to the mercy seat, to the throne room of God, and ask God for whatever we need. We can be forgiven. We can be healed. We can ask for whatever we need. But we have access now to the Father. We didn't have that before. Remember, Moses had a tent, and only Moses could go in. And then the high priest came, and they built a temple, and they had a, a priestly uh, order that they had to go through. They had a sacrifice of lamb. They had to come to the courts of praise and thanksgiving, sacrifice of lamb, and go in. The, the, and the, even the high priest had, had, had things that they had to do before they would go into God, God's presence. But now we're covered by the blood of the lamb. Because say, I'm covered. I'm forgiven. Amen? And now we can go into God's presence and we can ask Him for what we want. How many good think right now that I'm not worthy to go in God's presence? Uh, come on, raise your hand. Be honest. Yeah, I'm not worthy to go up. But, but you are because Jesus took care of our sin for us if we believe, right? And we ask Him to forgive us our sins. And Romans 10 says if we confess our sins and we believe in our hearts that Jesus was raised from what we are saved. Well, that gave us, now we're joint heirs with Jesus. Now we can go into God's presence and we can ask anything we want. And our Father, who loves us and cares for us and wanted to see us restored to a relationship with Him, just like Adam and Eve had before they sinned in the garden, we can now walk with God and talk with God and ask what we want and just have a relationship with our Father. Oh my God, it's just so amazing. Amen? We're not unworthy to be in God's presence. We're worthy because of what Jesus did for us. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Getting a little excited. We now can walk with God in every part of our life, at work, at home, and when we're sleeping, when we get up in the morning. God is there with us. He wants to talk with us. He wants to commune with us. He wants to be with us. Amen? 
And God wants all mankind, all womankind, all people, all kingdom, all nations, all people in the world to come to Him. Amen? But they have to hear, and they have to know, and their ears have to be open, or they're open, their eyes have to be open, and sometimes the enemy does not want them to come to God. Can you say amen? So we have power. Whatever we ask the Father, in Jesus' name, he said he'd do it for us. So this way. So I pray for my, my sister to get saved. And my sister is, uh, has, you know, I guess uh, she was a good Catholic, I guess, and she went to church once in a while, like Christmas and Easter and maybe once in the summertime. Didn't know Jesus, just knew she had to go to church. Got it. And I'm telling her for years, she needs Jesus, she needs Jesus. She wasn't hearing. She wasn't hearing what I was saying. Like, why doesn't she listen? Why doesn't she receive what I'm saying, God? She would call up and ask questions. She was just blinded by truth until I decided I'm going to start praying for her every day. Amen? Amen. And I want to go. I was, uh, does anybody have a prayer journal? Do you have a prayer Anybody have a prayer journal? Uh, let me just make a suggestion. And this is what I did, have done. I haven't done it recently, but I have this one. I threw most of these away, and I found this one in my desk. You know, I was cleaning out my desk, throwing stuff away, and I found this journal. And this particular one happens to be, uh, it, it's the first day, it's April 10th, 2005. That's when, like, the month after we got to Madison. Yeah, a couple months after we got to Madison. And it has all the people in the church at the time, and I was praying for them, amen? And I just like, like I just read everybody. I had my family, had my kids on here, had my my siblings, my mom and dad, uh, different people, uh, some of our internationals that were here at the time. I was praying for them. And uh, right after that, Andy, uh, one Pastor Andrew went out to Bible college, you know, and we couldn't afford to send them to Bible college, but you know. So he's still in debt today for that. But anyway, praise the Lord. Uh, you know, everybody's got student loans, I guess. But, uh, uh, you know, we're praying. So I was praying one day for him, and I was praying that he would, uh, he was talking about, you know, we're raising money, you're trying to get, you know, whatever. And so we were praying that he would get a scholarship. And I remember praying, this was a year, year well, two years later, I guess. And then he, uh, he got a, he called me up, Dad, I got a scholarship. I went to a meeting, and he was able to get some money. Uh, it was kind of cool. Uh, God provided for him. And so what I do is I just put, like, on one side, my prayer for the month. And on the other side, I put, like, the answered prayers. So I was praying for Tina to get a job, and Tina got a job. So I was praying, you know, on this side, and then I wrote when she got her job. That's what this page is right here. And I think that was the first one he got. And uh, ladies Bible study, we had nine people show up for that. Um, we had nobody show up for the prayer meeting. I got to that down. It's kind of, you know, through slow by my editor. Uh, I, oh, here. Uh, offerings over $4,000 every Sunday. I guess I could keep, keep praying that one. Anyway, um, so we had salvation. I had checkmarked that. We had somebody get saved that day or that month. We had water baptized Linda. You remember Linda? That's a long time ago. Um, we had water baptized. We had, people, we had three people baptized in the Holy Spirit. Uh, Nick and Jill. Uh, this was a great story. We're praying for this couple. They, uh, I got a phone call. I was at church studying for a sermon one Sunday. I'm just sharing this with you because I just want to know this, this kind of works sometimes when you have something systematically to do. So it says, um, so this couple, they were from Beloit, Wisconsin. And they still live there today. Their son uh, is choking on mucus, and they, he stopped breathing, and they metal backed him uh, to Madison. Uh, mom and dad were drug addicts, and so they were caught up in that lifestyle. They were out actually looking for drugs when this happened. So when the police came, and the ambulance came, and all that happened, they weren't even home. This, the younger, or the, sister, the, sister, the older sister was there. Anyway, they metal backed him here. I got a phone call from their aunt, from like Alabama and said, hey, can you go and help this couple? And I remember praying that, that day for them and the Holy Spirit said, go like that. It wasn't even like a wait, you know, yeah, I'll pray for them, you know, like that. You get some people like that. Uh, but I felt immediately go up to the hospital. I went up to the hospital and uh, he, was a, he was still in uh, had respiratory issues. Anyway, very, very uh, sad situation at the moment. Parents were panicked, you know. Uh, social services were there, which is a mess. 
right? You can imagine what that would be like for them. I walk up in the midst of that chaos, and I and the Lord just said peace. So I just walked in with just that attitude, like I'm going to bring peace to the situation. I laid hands on the little boy, and almost uh, instantly he began to breathe properly. And the next day he was uh, all machines and everything. It was like a little boy again. Just amazing miracle that happened. In the 24, that 24 hours, Dad repents and gives his life to Jesus. Amen. So I was praying for them, that family, that they would come fully to God and their whole family. And uh, we, we baptized quite a few of that family members uh, down on Boyd uh, a couple summers ago. So anyway, God is, so I'm saying, I, it's kind of neat to go back and read this. I, I, I laughed and I cried um, as I was going through this journal. The reason I want to share it with you is because I, I think is sometimes we have something systematically to look at, to pray for, it helps us. Can you say amen? Mm -hmm. I'm not a real list person, so we, I, there's months missing in here, you know, like I'll do it one month and I'm just not that way, but I, I try to be. But as, as, we, as you have something to systematically do and read or pray for, then you can, it will help you pray for um, uh, things more consistently. Amen? How many could use a little help praying? Amen. How many can use a little help, you know, being consistent, praying for lost friends? How many get tired of praying for the same thing over and over and over and over and seeing no results? But I said, whatever you ask in my name, you can do it for me, Father. So I go back to the Word. The Word says that when I pray for this person or I pray for this, I'm praying your will, God. I know you want them to be saved, so I'm praying for them. God, please help me, whatever it needs to take, to see them come to Jesus. Amen? And get desperate like that in your prayer time. And God will change you. Amen? Anyway, it's kind of fun looking through. I'll, I'll, I won't look at it through anymore. But um, I just want to say, I was going to buy one of these for everybody. I thought, well, if you really want one, you can buy one yourself, right? <laughs> 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 All right. But um, anyway, so we we have, God wants us to, uh, to have a heart that he has for the lost. Amen? Amen. And uh, so I want to share this with you. I'm going to come down here with this. Tina, would you help? Or William, can you help me? Real quick here. We're gonna I said we're gonna be in a living room, but I don't have a microphone in a living room, but anyway. Would you pass this out to everybody? So you gotta excuse the graphics. That's supposed to look like that one up there on the screen. You see that? Anyway, it did turn out really good good, but uh my uh, computer skills are still in need of something. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. So we're going to pretend we're in our living room right now, and we're going to talk about this card. And this card, I, I'm going to close with this. I want to uh, share these scripture verses with you to help us get a heart for the loss and dying of this world. Amen? And, uh, all right, so uh, Tamila, can you look up John? Okay, we're just going to go this way. I'm going to say, Tamila, look up John 644. William, can you look up Acts 1727? And Yolanda, 1 Thessalonians 213. And um, I'm going to forget everybody's name, but anyway. Tell me your name again. Kevin, Kevin sorry. I, I know I know it, but I just had a brain fart. <laughs> um, Kevin. Hey, just trying to be real, right? <laughs> oh, John dude. 16. You got that? What's, you got that one? Which one? I think he's at John, you're on five, John 16. One, two, three, four. You got number five. Oh, Number four. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. You got six? Who wants to read? Rachel? Seven? Is it Rosie, right? Eight. Rosa? Oh, good. We'll love Spanish. Go ahead and read it in Spanish. Is that okay? Yeah, we'll, we'll have somebody read it in English then, too. Hallelujah. So, you, what number are you, Rachel? Number seven. Seven, number eight. Absolute number nine. Emma, can you read number ten? All right. All right. So we're gonna take it one at a time. We're gonna explain a little bit, but then we're gonna move on, right? And we're gonna close praying for your friends, all right? 
So this is a little prayer card that we created. It was from another ministry. We kind of co copied it. So just let you know it's not everything's ours. I think there's, it's all for God's kingdom. The first one is John 6.44. Camilla, can you read that? Six forty four. That's all right. Oh, sorry. No, that's all right. What is it? I said that didn't go with it, but that's all right. Okay, no, nobody can come to me except the Father draws them. What's the last part? And I'll raise him up on that, on that last day. So nobody can come to God unless he's drawn. Now, what's the Holy Spirit's response? And John is about the Holy Spirit. Um, so the Holy Spirit draws people, right? God's drawing, always drawing people back to himself. Sin separated us, but God is always drawing us back to himself. So I pray this. Lord, I pray for, uh, for, you, uh, for you to draw, and it's whatever name. Draw Pastor Bob to yourself. Or maybe today, before we leave, we'll pray these prayers for ourselves today. Amen? Amen? Lord, I pray that you draw me to yourself. Hallelujah. Where there's love and peace and joy and patience and long suffering. Draw me to yourself. And then draw my friend so-and-so, right? Uh, number two. William. Acts 17, 27. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out to them and find him. Though he is not far from any one of us. Amen. So what did God do? And, and Acts tells right before verse chapter 17, I thought they raised Jesus from the dead, right? He suffered, died, and was raised from the dead. And so he did this so they would what? Know him. Mm -hmm. Amen. I pray, Jesus, that Pastor Bob will seek to know you. You can pray that for me, that's alright. Mm -hmm. Alright. So you want to pray for your friends to be drawn and to God, and you want to pray for your friends. To know him, amen? amen. Yolanda, read the first Thessalonians 2 13. For this cause also thank you, God, without ceasing, because we received the word of God which we heard of us. We received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that word. Amen. So we're not going to just speak words of ourselves. We're speaking words of God. We're going to share the gospel. We're going to share the truth with them. So the words that we speak to our friends, we want them to know that those are words of life, not words of death. Not just words of some psychologist or some philosophy. This is the true word of God that gives eternal life. So we're going to pray that for them. So their ears will be open and hear, and they, their spirit will receive the true word of God. Amen? So I pray that Pastor Bob will hear and believe the word of God for what it really is, the truth. Amen? Not all the junk, like, you hear, like, especially, um, well, I say especially Madison, but all over the world, you know, the Bible's not real, it's like, doesn't have, it's just an old ancient book, it's just a bunch of good story. No, the Bible, the Word of God is truth, amen, and God, by His Spirit, can give you a word for that person, we'll talk about that later, about a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, a word of life, amen? So we're going to share the gospel with people so they'll receive it, they'll receive what? Jesus. Amen. What are you sharing with people? Are you sharing them? This is how we tell, uh, you've probably been with us, some of you have been here for, for a long time. Know this, we don't say, come and join Capital City Church. You've probably heard it a lot. No, come and get to know Jesus. That's what we want here, amen? And that membership at our church is not going to get you to happen, amen? But, but we want to encourage you to walk with Jesus every day, amen? Go to Jesus. The Spirit of God will help you. So when you're speaking, you want to speak truth. You want your friends or Pastor Bob, to know the truth, because the truth will what? Set me free from the bondage of my sin and, and cleanse me and make me whole. And man, all my stuff that I'm dealing with in my life, God can forgive and make me a, a, a new person, a new way. All things are passed away and all things become new. That's truth in God, amen? And we want them to hear the truth. Number four, I ask you, Lord, to present, uh, prevent Satan from blinding Pastor Bob from the truth. Okay, there's two scripture verses there. Who's going to read that, Kevin? Yeah. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4 4. And whom the God of this world hath blinded the men's, or blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the word of the gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Amen. So, the who blinds people from knowing the truth? It's not the philosophies of the world, it's Satan. 
Satan does that. Satan blinds you. Satan blinds them. I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. You have no authority over their life. Amen. Or over my life. In the name of Jesus, you cannot blind me any longer. I am open to the truth of the gospel. I will walk with Jesus. Satan, you have no authority over me because Jesus died for me and, and restored me to a right relationship with the Father. Satan, you have no authority over my mind or my heart or my soul. You have no authority over me. Come on. Or my health or my finances. Satan, you've got no authority. Because Jesus, so Satan, you have no authority over Pastor Bob. Bring him to the truth, right? So you want to pray that over your friends. Or pray that for yourself first. Amen? Amen. Right? And whatever the Holy Spirit leads you to pray at that time, pray that prayer because that's so important. Amen? Um, who has number five? Holy Spirit, I ask you to convict Pastor Bob of sin and the need of Christ's redemption. Christ's redemption. For, uh, John 16. Who has John 16? But I tell you the truth. It is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regard to sin, because men do not believe in me, in regards to righteousness, because I am, I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer, and in regard to judgment, because the prince of the world yes. now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. Amen. Amen. That's so powerful, right? Oh, yeah. So the Spirit of God comes to convict unbelievers of their sin. Who convicts the unbeliever of their sin? Say it out loud. Who convicts the unbeliever of their sin? Holy Spirit, not the church. Not you. Let me say that again. It's so powerful. This is a powerful lesson for me to learn. So I can see sin in people's lives because we just see that, right? And we want to speak to that right away. You're doing this wrong. You're doing that wrong. I've been to church a long time. It's all about what you do wrong. Behavioral change. It's not about that. It's about the Holy Spirit convicting them and they realize that what they're doing is sin. And then we're the ones to share the redemptive story that even though you're in your brokenness, God can, through Jesus Christ, can make you whole. Who's ever heard that before, right? Yeah. So who convicts the unbeliever of their sin? What is our responsibility to the unbeliever? To help them. Pray for them and love them. How many ever heard it? Come on. Yeah. Pray for them Pray. and love them. And the Spirit convicts them. And then you share with them, oh yes, you're guilty because of that. But you know what? Jesus can restore you if you just believe in Him. If you would ask him to forgive you, he will forgive you. If you believe in your heart, you would be saved. Amen. If you believe the truth of the gospel, which is our responsibility to share, not to say you're sinning, you're sinning, you're sinning, you're sinning, you're sinning. I remember in North Carolina, we used to come home from church, and there'd be these churches with big signs yelling at the Marines or yelling at people on the corner that you're sinning, you're going to hell, you're you're killers, you're whatever, you know. And I'm thinking, I'm not drawn to that. I'm not drawn to that. But I'm drawn to maybe having dinner with you and talking to you about Jesus and your life. Amen? Amen. I'm drawn to the love that you show me and care for me even though I'm no good and I feel guilty about my sin. Because the Spirit of God is the one that convicts. Can we get that in our uh, saints? Listen, it's so important to understand. You're convicted of your sin because the Holy Spirit doesn't. The unbeliever is convicted of their sin because the Holy Spirit doesn't. But there's a story that you have to tell. That you can be saved. You, can be, you don't have to live in your guilt. You can be free from that. You get the bondage of your guilt, the chains, and the brokenness that you have in your life. Is, can be, you can be set free. Amen? Because Jesus has restored you. Amen? All right. Uh, number six. Is that Tammy? Yes. Matthew 9, 37 and 38. Matthew 9, 37 and 38. Matthew 9, 37 and 38. 
Cyrus is truly plenty of but the labor about you. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers for his harvest. Amen. Amen. So let me ask you this thing. Are we here to build Capital City Church into a great big church? No. No, no. Or are we here to help the kingdom of God grow? So we pray for our friend. Maybe there's somebody that will be out there, another Christian out there, or somebody else, another believer, right? Because remember, we pray that God will give the increase, not us. And you say, well, God increases the church anyway. It just happens that way. You bring your friends, you get to know them, you get to know the story, you buy them, and the church grows. That's fine. I'm just saying, we're not, it's not our goal is to build, uh, you know, 100 people in Capital City Church or whatever our goal is. I don't even know if we have a goal for that. Our goal is that people mature in Christ Jesus, amen? But we pray that they will come to meet somebody else. So let's say they're at, you're, you're, you're sharing Christ with them. All of a sudden they're at work and one of their, their co-workers shares Jesus with them. And all of a sudden they get an Uber drive and they get a, a, somebody to share Jesus with them, right? Or they go to the grocery store. And all of a sudden now everywhere they go, there's meeting people that are sharing Jesus with them. They're hearing the message, God, use anybody so my friend can come and know Jesus, amen? And who knows, you might have the opportunity to lead them to Christ and, and pray that special prayer with them to say yes to Jesus. It doesn't matter. What we want them to do is to come to Jesus, amen? And then if we get the opportunity to pray that prayer with them, all oh, praise God, we'll celebrate, we'll have a dance, you know, we'll do all those wonderful things and baptize them and we'll just, we'll just celebrate with you, amen? But it's God that gives a increase. But I'm praying that God would say, wherever they go, that they'll meet other Christians that love Jesus and that they hear the word, the message that I'm sharing, amen? So I ask that you send someone that will share the gospel with Pastor Bob, amen? Uh, number seven, I also pray, ask that you will give me uh, me or Pastor Bob, they have to me and the courage and the right words to share with all. Me or somebody else. So say, uh, you know, me and somebody else. Yeah, so, so to, uh, Tammy and myself, Lord, uh, give us an opportunity to share with somebody. If we're working with a co-worker, right? You have co as a Christian. Let us give, say the right words. Let's look at it. Colossians 4, 3-6. through 6. Who has that? All right, praise God. Amen. Amen. I don't want to, I'm not going to add anything to that. Just live like Christ. And, uh, what's the last part, Rachel? Is season with salt. Season with salt. How many likes to put salt on our food, right? Doesn't it like, you want more when you have, the, right? You want more? I want to be seasoned with salt so the person tastes of God and know that God is good. Amen. Through my witness and through me sharing with them and loving on them. All right, Rosie. And then you can sit, read it in English, okay, Rachel? But let her do it, let's do it in Spanish. Oh, Spanish. Or whatever, yeah, it would be easier for her. You can translate. Okay, yeah, you can translate. <laughs> yeah. That would be fun. I know it would be easier for you, so don't. Yeah. We're, we're, yeah. Esperar que los cielos a su hijo, el cual resucitó de los muertos, a 
Jesús que nos libra de la babilonia. I got two words out of that. That's, that's okay. Rachel, go ahead. Okay, first let's go to the end of one line through ten. For they themselves report what kind of reception, re, whatever, reception you give us. Reputation. No reception. Say, uh, tell you how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his son. Jesus who rescued us from the coming wrath. What's the wrath that's coming? The judgment, right? That we talked about earlier in Matthew, the sheep and the goat, right? Jesus rescued us from that. And we want our friends and our neighbors and our loved ones, even the people we don't even know their name yet, we want them to come to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. All right. We got two more. Ready? Um, was it Hephzibah? Yeah. Okay. So John 1, 12. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Amen. And then 524? 524 says, Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. Hallelujah. So we're coming from death to light, from darkness into the light. Amen. Men like darkness better than light, and we want them to go from the light, and we want to come out, to come out of the dark bars and the dark venues and all the things, and come into the come and know Jesus. Right? The darkness that's in their life, the secret sin that they have. God will show them what they are, so they can come from darkness or death to life. From eternal death to eternal salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, Emma, there's, there's quite a few there. Do you have all of them? Yeah. Okay. Do you need some help with that? I would try. You'll try? How about we do this? I have somebody. Can you do Colossians 2, 6 through 7? And then and Emma, you can do Romans 10 and 9 and 10, and then Luke 8, 15. Okay, Emma? Okay. Let's put that up just a little bit for you. All right? Okay. All right, Romans 10, 9 and 10. So Romans 10 for now says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. Yes. Ten. Ten for with the heart you believe unto righteousness and with your mouth you confess.